Good morning. Today we're going to be talking about logical fallacies. We'll be talking about what fallacies are, why we should study them, the structure of logical arguments, and also we will introduce several of the fallacies that we will be studying in this particular course. What is a logical fallacy? A logical fallacy is a kind of mistake in reasoning. It's a kind of bad logic. Often fallacies seem correct at first because of the way that our brains are wired. Because fallacies often seem to be true at first, much common sense thinking falls prey to fallacies. That's why it's important to think logically and rigorously about topics. Logical fallacies can be used deliberately to manipulate others, to make others believe what you want them to believe, which leads us to one of the main reasons to study logical fallacies, to protect ourselves against deception, against manipulation from other people. And this often comes in the form of advertising or propaganda which is media that is meant to change the way that we think or act. In other words, studying logical fallacies can allow us to improve our thinking skills, protect us against deception from unscrupulous people. Unscrupulous meaning people who don't have strong morals. And actually, to win arguments or debates against people who attempt to use logical fallacies to convince the audience. To understand logical fallacies, we must first understand the structure of an argument. And an argument is a way of reasoning, a way of using logic, which has two parts. A premise, or one or more premises, really, we could have more than one, and a conclusion. The premise, or the premises, support the conclusion. And actually, we often see in speech or writing words like because, since, or for, which mark premises. A conclusion is the result of applying logic to the premises. It's often, but not always, introduced with words like therefore, thus, or so. And really, fallacies occur when the premises do not support the conclusion. So, how many logical fallacies are there? In fact, there's no exhaustive list of fallacies. Different logicians have compiled different lists. The short answer is there are many, many fallacies, more than we could possibly cover in one class. In our class, we're going to focus on eight common fallacies. And many of the fallacies you encounter will either be on this list or will be similar to one of the fallacies on this list. So really, these eight are a good place to start. The first of the eight fallacies is the circular argument. And to understand this type of fallacy, we need to think again about a logical argument, the structure of a logical argument in which we have a premise or premises and we have the conclusion. This fallacy is called a circular argument because the conclusion is stated or assumed as part of the premises. Here we need to focus on the ideas rather than on the words. So for this type of fallacy you might not see the same words that appear in the conclusion, in the premises, but the idea will be the same. This type of fallacy is an example of bad logic because, in a way, the conclusion is being used to prove itself. Now, let's talk through one example. If I tell you the Bible is the Word of God and the Bible says that God exists, I know the Bible is true because it's the Word of God and therefore my conclusion is that God exists. This is an example of circular logic or a circular argument. My conclusion is that God exists. However, one of my premises is that the Bible is the word of God. 
how can the Bible be the word of God if God does not exist? This means that I'm incorporating my conclusion that God exists as an assumption in one of my premises, namely the premise that the Bible is the word of God. I need to offer a word of caution here. These fallacies are sometimes easy to recognize when they're reduced to a sentence or a few sentences. These fallacies do not need to occur in such a short space. If you were reading a book, for example, and an argument were developed over the course of the book, the argument could incorporate a fallacy such as a circular argument that's developed over a hundred pages or several hundred pages. Let's move on to our second fallacy, the argument from authority. This fallacy is based on putting faith in the wrong type of authority. That is, believing that someone, what someone says is good or right or correct based on their authority, which is a type of authority that does not apply. So I'll give you an example, but first let's talk about the general structure. In this type of fallacy, in our premise, we will see that person X or organization X believes something and that person or organization has authority. Therefore, their belief must be true or good or trustworthy. And again, let me emphasize that here we're talking about the wrong kind of authority. Let me give you an example. Isaac Newton, who I'm sure you're all familiar with, um, one of the greatest scientists in history, believed in God. Premise. Isaac Newton believed in God. Isaac Newton was a great scientist. Therefore, our conclusion, God must exist. Here we need to question the kind of authority that Isaac Newton had. He was a great scientist, but really that does not mean that he should be an authority on spiritual matters or that we would need to necessarily accept his philosophical or theological beliefs. The third logical fallacy that we're going to talk about today is the bandwagon fallacy. And the general structure of this fallacy is that because many people or organizations or entities believe or think or do a certain thing, that thing must be good or true or right. So basically, in this fallacy, you're basing your conclusion that something is good on the fact that many or most or a great number of entities do that thing. It's based on the belief that the majority is right. Let's look at an example, a recent example, um, involving full body scanners at airports. So full body scanners are used in security, mainly at airports. With this technology, the scanner can look through people's clothes to look for drugs or weapons, right, as they're coming into the airport. Now, this is very controversial because, of course, it represents an invasion of people's privacy. Today, this issue of security or safety versus privacy is a major point of contention. So this example is quite timely. What if I were to tell you that countries around the world use full body scanners in airports? Therefore, we should begin using these scanners in Thai airports. This is a fallacy. Here, the conclusion that we should use these scanners is based solely, that is only, on the premise that other countries are using these scanners. In this case, we would need more evidence or support for the idea that scanners should in fact be used in Thai airports. So in summary, today we've talked about what a fallacy is, why we should study fallacies, about the general structure of an argument, and we've also introduced the first three logical fallacies that we will be covering in this course. Once again, I cannot stress how important it is to learn to recognize these fallacies.
through studying logic and here particularly through studying logical fallacies, you'll become a better student. That is, you'll be able to read and listen to lectures and identify the types of arguments that people are making and perhaps where the arguments are flawed. You'll become better as a thinker. You'll be able to analyze ideas critically instead of relying on your first instinct, which is sometimes wrong. And really, studying logical fallacies will benefit you as a person. In your personal life, in your interaction with other people, there are additional benefits to studying logic. In our next lecture, we will discuss an additional five common logical fallacies. Thank you.